welcome back. Now, before we move on to some of the sort of really complex substitution stuff, I thought I'd do something a little bit simpler, type of clue that sort of stands alone and that most people are quite familiar with anyway, which is anagrams. Anagrams for me are always a good way in. If I'm feeling a bit dopey, not getting very far with a crossword in the morning, I'll look for anagrams first because then you get some letters in the grid and you can start to sort of work from those letters and it's a good, it's a good starting point. And in their simplest form, they operate sort of in a very easily and accessible way. Now, you do get some where you're picking and choosing letters from all over the place and it gets quite complicated, but there is a very, very simple and quite commonly used anagram clue, which um, we'll do a couple of examples of now. They work in exactly the same way as normal clues. You have definition and you have wordplay, but your wordplay is just one thing. Your wordplay is a word that indicates an anagram is happening, the letters you're gonna scramble up, and the definition, that's all you've got. So, example. City, brute, I put right. Six letters. City, brute, I put right. Now, one thing is sometimes anagrams, not all the time, but fairly commonly, you will not have that word that was the equal sign in the other clues. It does happen, but you, you, you can tend to lose it. So in this case, you've just got definition, which is city, I'll give that one away. Put right is your anagram indicator. Put right, as in correct, as in change the letters next to this. So as soon as you see something like that, you look six letters, the letters you're gonna unscramble are always going to be right next to the anagram indicator in their simplest form. So if this was in the middle of a clue, which it can be, it can be in the middle, it could be anywhere, you look for the number of letters either side. So you've got six letters there, which means anagram indicator, definition, that's what you're messing about with. Probably got it already, but Beirut, that's a city. So, city, brute, I put right, very, very simple. But you've still got that classic sort of breakdown pattern, definition, wordplay, and the wordplay is just that, the anagram indicator. Now this can be any number of things, a really vast range of things. Anything that indicates change, uh, movement, distortion, confusion, anything like that. So you'll see words like scrambled is the really obvious one, but also words like frenzied or frantic, meaning the words are all kind of bubbling up in a mess. Or um, new, renewal is another one. So I've just seen the word new, N-E-W, and that means a new version of. So this, if this was city, brute, I renewed, it would do exactly the same thing. City, brute, I altered, changed. Um, City brute I found in confusion could almost um, could almost work. So any word that indicates a change of state or um, a distortion of any kind could go here and do exactly the same job. So there's a really there's a really broad range, but it's always worth scanning down a crossword if you're you know slow starting, looking for any word that sort of suggests alteration, distortion, change of any kind. Count the letters. Look either side see if those number of letters are there, and then anything else that's left is your definition. You can have a quick, quick look, and if you suddenly think, oh yeah, you, know, you, you can get one straight away. You can get sort of like, it's like a free hit. You can just suddenly get a clue because you see the, the, the breakdown of the letters. So we're gonna have another look at a little example. I've run out of space there, obviously, but um, sense of past perfect, again, lost in translation. Sense of past perfect, again, lost in translation. Now. I have run out of space, but it's actually quite useful because that break, and you'll often see crossword clues written in thin columns and the words sit on different lines. So you have to think outside of, don't, don't let the, uh, the sort of pagination fool you. So you look at this, you suspect that you might be dealing with an anagram clue because of in translation. Not translation on its own, but in translation. Translation could be, it could be possible, but if you look at translation on its own, you'll think two, six, remember you're trying to count up to nine, two, six, 11, there's too many. In translation on its own, four and five, there's your nine letters. So everything that's left, and of course you could be wrong, you could be doing this and then find out that it's actually the definition is sense on its own and it all breaks down differently. 
but you have a quick look if you don't get anywhere come back try and change attack so in translation again lost sense of past perfect is a huge definition but they do happen so that's not to be scared of and then you know you've got these nine letters to work with and as soon as you look at that nostalgia that's simple so that's another very simple type of anagram clue the only thing you have to do is keep a very open mind about what this definition this definition will be anything that indicates change in any way or yeah a refocusing in any sense and then there's a couple of tricks for uh, actually unscrambling the letters personally I look for endings so T-I-O-N uh, I-N-G make sure that you're agreeing with the definition that you've got the right part of speech so if you know that a word if, if this is a continuous verb or implies one you're looking for ing so you can basically it's like a fruit machine you can take out the ing hold that spin everything else but i do find it helps to have a, a clear sense of the definition because I, it's like your brain um is going into a folder so you look in that folder for all those letters this is my advanced neurology degree that i awarded myself this morning but it seems to me like you're looking in folders with the letters in mind rather than just looking plainly at the letters and trying to work them out without a guide so the definition guides your thinking also look for any unusual letters or double consonants and see where they would go if you've got a k or a q you know it's likely to go with certain other letters it's likely to appear in certain places in words and not others so you can start to kind of form blocks of thinking and quickly check is it this kind of word is it that kind of word always keep your definition in mind so that's it really anagrams pretty simple very very broad number of things um, uh, there's a couple on the discussion board actually that have some fairly obscure um, indicators of anagrams in them so watch out for those um, and that's it I always find they're a good way in so have a quick scan down look for any word that roughly implies change in any way and just crunch the letters until you get there and yeah, you should uh, you should get a few clues from that. So happy solving.